Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiator and Eastern Antique Arms as well of course. And I've got a sword here which I'll show you straight off which has inspired this video. I just on the spur of the moment do it. So I posted this on the Eastern Antique Arms um, Facebook page uh, basically <laughs> saying what is this thing? Um, so you might look look at this and think, oh, it's a messer. Um, it's a lang messer, but it's not really because it's 19th century, or at least I believe it's 19th century. Um, if we look at the style of the grip, you can see it does have lateral rivets through it here. Uh, the grip is shaped very much like a messer. The hilt, uh, or rather the guard, is shaped some like some sort of sort of like some sort of uh, perhaps almost like a mamluk uh, type saber, but equally like some types of Dussac and uh, Messer, Lang Messer that we see. It doesn't have any sort of uh, nagel or you know side projections or anything like that. Um, and it is actually dated uh, 1848. Now there are a couple of characteristics which might not be clear about it to you on camera, um, that this is the sharp edge, okay? So it is shaped a bit like a, an Anglo-Saxon broken back sax in a way. Uh, it's quite unusual uh, certainly for the 19th century, to have the edge on the straighter part of the blade and have it curving down like that. Obviously there are types of Filipino um, weapons which are like that. Uh, we'll look at a Filipino weapon, not like not this shape, but we'll look at one in a second. Um, and it's also very heavy. That might not be evident from uh, the uh, from the picture. So the first thing that people normally go is, number one, it's either a pioneer's sword, we'll look at a pioneer's sword in a minute, or it's a uh, sort of machete type tool, um, or it's a hunting sword. Well, I've got examples of all of those here and a couple of other things besides to compare it to. Uh, so first of all, let's look at the pioneer's sword. Well, I, I do actually think this is probably a pioneer's sword, but if it is a pioneer's sword, then well, what model is it? From its general shape, I suspect that it might be German or Austrian, something like that, maybe even Swiss. But I don't really know. It's dated 1848 on it, so it's mid 19th century and presumably European given the, the, the style of dating that's been put on it. Um, but this is a pioneer sword and it's a bayonet. Yes, indeed, it's the 1879 Sawback uh, Martini Henry uh, Pioneers or Royal Engineers, um, or rather used by artillery actually very often, um, uh, bayonet. Uh, but it's basically a pioneer sword as well. So you see it's got a saw edge on the back. Now you do find saw edges not just on pioneer swords for sawing wood, but you do find them sometimes on hunting swords for sawing the legs off your deer after you've shot it, um, or sawing up the carcass in general, um, sawing through, through bone. So this is, uh, this is one type of pioneer sword that was used in the 19th century. You do get pioneer swords that look a bit like this, but they usually have metallic grips instead of wooden grips, um, usually, not always. There is also, you could argue, the um, the type of gladius type uh, sword that was made in the 19th century, particularly in France, and then copied by uh, people from there. And that was used by um, artillery gunners as well for similar purposes as these uh, as pioneer swords. Now I'm saying these. I don't know that this is a pioneer sword. Uh, is it a hunting sword? Well, I don't think so, because this is really heavy. This is the weight and sort of balance and mass of something for chopping up wood. It's not like most hunting swords. I do haven't happen to have a hunting sword here, uh, which you can see is a similar size, but I tell you in the hand it feels completely different. This is very light and nimble and is clearly designed principally for stabbing probably, well in the case of this, almost certainly a deer because it has etching up the blade with uh, scenes, a hunting scene of shooting deer uh, with a musket or a rifle and it's got dogs on the, uh, on the cross guard, dog heads on here and a lion head on the pommel. So this is exclusively a hunting implement for a gentleman to dispatch a wounded animal with and indeed you could use it perhaps on boars and bears and other things you've shot. Um, but fundamentally this is for giving the coup de grace and it is a light, nimble, finely made uh, instrument, uh, which this is definitely not. This is a uh, this is a clod, and I would point out as well, it very clearly has been sharpened repeatedly and still has a good edge on it. You could use this in the zombie apocalypse pretty much straight away, <laughs> even though it's 170 years old. So um, yes, this is, uh, this is beefy. Um, is it like a machete? Well, not like normal machetes. I have here a 19th century uh, bill hook type um, forward curved, so the edge is on the inner side here. You do get some that look exactly like this, but are that way around and the edge is on that side, but this one's on the inner edge. 
I actually, despite the fact that this is a British made, probably Birmingham, I can't remember if it's got a marking on it, this one, I don't think it does, but some of them do, makers like Mole and Reeves and so on. These were made, churned out by their thousand in the 19th century, and they were sold uh, around the world. They were used as trade goods, basically, all over Africa and bits of Asia, South America, all over the place. And the similar ones were made in Solingen in Germany as well. So these are very good tools. They're very nice steel. I actually use this as a gardening tool. This is my preferred things to lop things off in my garden with. Um, and it, it's great, but they're very thin. This is very thick. Uh, so this is thick like uh, pioneer swords tend to be. Okay, so this is more something that you can use as a knife. You could use it as a machete, but you can also use it as an ax. Uh, if, for chopping up big pieces of wood, I wouldn't want to use this thin type of machete. This is very nimble and you can chop up, uh, you know, sort of brush, bush, uh, thin, thin branches and leaves and stuff. You can chop grass even. You can chop that up all day with one of these. But if you were trying to do that with something like this, it's very cumbersome and you get tired out much more quickly. But this can split a log. Um, now, for fighting weapons, it is fairly big, but it is not as big as a cutlass. This is the Model 1900 cutlass, a British Royal Navy cutlass. So it's not as big as that, and of course it doesn't have hand protection, but uh, it does have some hand protection. It does have a cross guard, which again suggests it's not purely a tool like the machete. Uh, hunting swords do often have cross guards, it has to be said. You could argue that's mostly to stop the hand uh, slipping out of place or slipping up upwards rather than necessarily to protect the hand from an opponent but this is actually quite a long cross guard which again harks back to the idea this is probably a fighting implement and then if we look at some ethnographic weapons of a similar size just for interest here is an afghan um, chura or chara which is the uh, so-called kyber knife famous kyber knife and it's a similar size but i have to say the kyber knife is clearly only a fighting instrument because it has a T-section blade. That is, it has essentially a, a bar back and then a very fat, uh, flat, thin blade. So the, the kyber knife is a very nimble and quick and light little weapon. Not like this clod here, which could cut three zombies' heads off with one blow or split a log. This is much more hefty. And equally, if we go to a different part of the world, if we go to the Philippines, here we have a Moro Chris or Keris. Um, and it, again, it's a similar size and it might look like a similar sort of mass to you looking on camera. I can assure you it's not. Uh, the Moro Chris is really light and nimble with a nice thin blade, um, wavy blade in this case. And um, this feels like a fighting weapon. And that, you know, reminds us that with some exceptions aside, usually tools tend to be chunkier um, than weapons do. But that's not always the case, because as we see in machetes, specialised kind of tool for lighter brush um, tend to actually be pretty light. And uh, some weapons, like the cutlass, are actually tend to be pretty heavy. So there are variations. But anyway, uh, sometimes generalisations are useful, sometimes they're not. So the question comes back to what is it? Well, I think it probably is a pioneer sword, but for whom and what model is it? Uh, you know, it, it's got a date 1848 on it. Is this an 1848 model pioneer sidearm of where? I don't know. So answers on a postcard, as they used to say on kids TV programs when I was young, um, comments below. What do you think it is? Who do you think, do you know? Is this a specific model? Is it for the, I don't know, the Austrian Alpine pioneers or something? I don't know. My guess is it's probably German or Austrian. The only final thing I'd say about it, which might be a clue, is bizarrely, especially considering that I, my guess would have been that this was German or Austrian, I can actually see a structure uh, in the steel. That is, it's a, a complex... I won't quite say pattern welded, but I can see that there are laminations in the uh, blade. Um, and it, so it's, it seems to be hand forged and not necessarily factory made. And at this period, we wouldn't usually expect to see that sort of structure. You know, it's the sort of structure I'd be more used to seeing in a Filipino um, blade or in an Afghan blade or an Indian blade or an African blade, I wouldn't usually expect to see that structure visibly, and this is without cleaning it, I wouldn't expect to see that structure visibly in a European factory made piece. So it could, it could simply be a locally made uh, weapon or tool or both, that doesn't have to be exclusively one or the other, 
for the South American market maybe, or perhaps the European market, perhaps Asian or uh, African markets. Uh, I don't know, but it could be a locally made, specifically made one-off piece. It might be that it's not a model and that it's not a specific thing. It might be that it's not specifically a pioneer sword or it's not specifically a hunting sword or a tool or whatever, but it's all of the above. And that's a good reminder to the fact that throughout history, a lot of weapons, uh, you know, I've talked about the cookery, for example, I've talked about tomahawks, a lot of weapons aren't necessarily only weapons, they're also tools. And a lot of tools aren't only tools, they are also used as weapons, you know, scythes and sickles and all sorts of stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, ideas um, and comments below. Give us a subscribe and a like if you please, and I will see you really soon for another video on Scholar Gladiator channel. Cheers for watching, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.